Welcome back to the joy of Nietzsche, to a mill of my musings, operated for no other purpose than to direct my involuntary mental overflow into explicative gears that grind perfectly good Nietzschean poems into powder. Hmm. Perhaps at its best, it may be an Ovaltine of joy with a dash of delusion that once dissolved into your bloodstream will deliver a vision that Nietzsche wished for us all. Quote, A glimpse of a humanity that justifies its existence. A glimpse of an incarnate human happiness that realizes and redeems. For the sake of which, one may hold fast to the belief in humanity. End quote. I doubt any of us has had a glimpse of this kind lately, given the pervasive parading images of the pitiful and guilt-inspiring crimes posted everywhere. So let's look somewhere new and peek into a short, hopeful conversation recorded in Nietzsche's poem, Dialogue. Was I sick? Am I recovered? And by whom have I been doctored? How have I forgotten all? Now I trust that you're recovered. Healthy is who can't recall. Here, perhaps the first person is a reader of Nietzsche, and the second Nietzsche himself. This reader may have just realized that lately they've been enjoying life a lot more, that they've attained a mental healthiness that feels like awaking from one of those dreams, where the worst parts have inexplicably vanished from memory. The waking, joyful reader tries in vain to recall the reason for their past illness, their past unhappiness, be it some guilt-ridden or pitiful memories, but they realize they can't remember because those very memories were the germ of their misery, and by forgetting them, they have eradicated that which made them ill. Many today are sickened by memories of past events. It's especially popular to hold onto horrifying events that never even happened to you, or to anyone you know or ever knew. One resents such events so intensely that they cannot live joyfully so long as they are mindful of them. Like rabid animals who bite for no other reason than that they are ill and controlled by their illness, a resentment of unforgettable historic wrongs causes many a modern mouth to froth and to bite. Nietzsche believed these bites contained a potentially global contagion. After all, each of us identifies with some culture, and every culture through history has at one point been brutalized or been the brutalizer. Thus, every human mind can be infected by this disease by simply unveiling the right events in history. Perhaps that very unveiling is the rabbit bite. The result is a so-called suffering Olympics that buttresses the bad feelings one may have today with all the horrors of history. This memory-related contagion is obviously hazardous to basic civil exchange between cultures, as it can inspire blind hatred between groups. But Nietzsche suggests another hazard, that this contagion spreads a sort of pity that threatens to destroy all cultures and their underlying values from within. Quote, The morality of pity which spread wider and wider was the most sinister symptom of our modern civilization. It was the route along which that civilization slid on its way to nihilism. This exaggerated estimation in which modern philosophers have held pity is quite a new phenomenon. Before that time, philosophers were absolutely unanimous as to the worthlessness of pity. I need only mention Plato, Spinoza, La Rochefoucauld, and Kant. Four minds as mutually different as is possible, but united on one point, their contempt of pity. End quote. Why so much contempt? Where's the danger in the so-called morality of pity? Well, since all current values come from past cultures, all cultures resenting the historic actions of all other cultures and themselves results in the attack of all values, on all fronts, from all origins. After such an internal and external war against all values, nothing meaningful is likely to remain. The result may be seen in modern America, where the memory of all manner of historic horrors has spread a pity morality almost everywhere. The inability to forget at least the germy parts of these historic horrors, to withhold this single contaminating ingredient from the American melting pot of cultures, has instead of producing a spicy soup of surprising flavors, produced a bland gruel that even the very cooks can't stomach. Where's the cure? Good question. 
Nietzsche suggests that it is, quote, active forgetfulness, as it is a very sentinel and nurse of psychic order, repose, etiquette, and this shows at once why it is that there can exist no happiness, no gladness, no hope, no pride, no real present without forgetfulness. End quote. What if your body could not forget and kept everything you stuffed into it? Every detail of your dietary history and its after effects, all inside you. You would feel miserable. You would consider yourself diseased. You'd look for a cure, a way to purge what is toxic and keep what is healthy. As Nietzsche says of the one who cannot forget, quote, the person in whom this preventative apparatus is damaged and discarded is to be compared to a dyspeptic, and it is something more than a comparison. They can get rid of nothing. End quote. Will you digest only what is nutritive from history, purge what is toxic, and thereby entrust all germs of guilt to the ameliorative nurse of psychic order, repose, etiquette, to forgetfulness? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then again, shatter, shatter, oh my brethren, the like button, and tatter the maxims of the world maligners in the comment section below.